Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black green elf deck, which recently got access to Court of Calling on Arena, which is a great way to find our various creatures, including our Shaman of the Pack, which is our finisher of choice. When it enters the battlefield, the opponent loses life equal to the number of elves we control. And in a deck that's capable of making lots of elf tokens, this can sometimes just win us the game on the spot. And then by making tokens, we're also enabling the Convoke on Court of Calling, making it easier to search up whatever creature we want after maybe casting a bunch of elves in our turn. So that's the goal here. Unlike the historic variant of elves that's more about making a ton of mana, this build is more about going wide and draining the opponent to death with our Shaman of the Pack. So at one mana we still have the same one mana Accelerance, Elvish Mystic, Lanor Elves, and then a Sentinel needs to tap another untapped creature to make mana, but can also fix our colors to maybe cast a Shaman of the Pack which requires black mana. Then at 2 mana our key creature is Elvish Warmaster, which will make another 1-1 one, one elf token whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control. And now between Collected Company and Court of Calling, we have 8 ways of maybe putting a creature into play during the opponent's turn, which will also trigger the Warmaster once again, otherwise it only triggers once each turn. So that way we can potentially trigger Warmaster in our turn, and then once again in the opponent's turn. So one of the common play patterns in this deck is to play some creatures in our turn, and then in the opponent's turn, Turn, cast Court of Calling X equals 3, and then get our Shaman of the Pack, which will make another 1-1 one, one token with Warmaster, and then afterwards we want to drain the opponent with Shaman to get the most out of it. Then we also have 4 copies of Dwinan's Elite, a 2-2 two -two that immediately makes a 1-1 one, one token if we control another Elf, and then a few Lords with Elvish Clan Caller and a Leaf Crowned Visionary that will pump up our team, so we can potentially just get there by attacking with our Elf tokens, and then the Visionary can also draw additional cards, whereas Clan Caller can potentially search up additional copies of itself. And then at 3 mana our only creature is Shaman of the Pack, which does mean our collected company may not be quite as impactful as in other decks with more 3 mana creatures, but finding a Shaman of the Pack with it can be incredibly devastating, especially if we find more token makers alongside it, which can make their tokens before draining the opponent with Shaman of the Pack. And then sometimes we can set up turns where we collected company and then still cast a Court of Calling afterwards if we have enough untapped creatures, because with Convoke we can of course also discount the green mana cost on Court of calling by tapping our green creatures, so we can sometimes essentially cast it for free without needing any lands untapped. And then our mana base includes two copies of Nykthos, which can also provide a small mana boost if we have multiple elves in play, especially cards like Clan Caller and Visionary providing two devotion, and then the extra mana from Nykthos will make it easier to maybe pump the team with Warmaster, which is another way to end the game if we don't have Shaman of the Pack available. Then a plenty of black green dual lands with Blooming Marsh, Lanor Waste and Overgrown Tomb, and Secluded Courtyard, another nice dual land for an elf deck. Now do keep in mind this won't make green mana when it comes to drawing cards with your Leaf Crown Visionary, which is why I'm not going crazy on a Secluded Courtyard or Unclaimed Territory. And also if you're playing this in best of three, you might want to cast a Thoughtseize out of the sideboard and then Courtyard doesn't help, so you'll need those other black green dual lands instead. And then one layer of the Hydra can be an extra win condition as well, especially against control decks having a creature land is nice, couple forests in case we need to surge this up, and then Boseju can also offer a bit of interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with uh, keepable hands. Could use another one drop. But uh, not bad enough for Mulgan for sure. Depending on the matchup, either Warmaster or Elite on two. Green White. Alright, there's our one mana elf. Perfect. So now Warmaster into Mystic. We'll generate an extra token. That's the start we were hoping for. And then we probably want to generate a few more tokens before playing Shaman of the Pack. Opponents a green-white Angel life gain deck, perhaps. And they have the turn to Bishop, that's bad news. That can certainly get them out of range from Shaman. So this turn I have essentially 5 mana, which is enough for Visionary. And then play a lead draw card. So don't mind that. And we also get to attack here. So all in all we've got an excellent start. Just missing a company or a court of calling. But we'll see what the opponent can come up with. 
A Righteous Valkyrie would also be scary. It's going to be a tap land and Jada instead. Still gains four. And there's our Court of Calling. Perfect. All right, so we should be able to figure out a win here. If I go Warmaster, Shaman, then I can court for another Shaman. And not going to pay here. Don't need the card draw. Could court in the opponent's turn, but we could also just court right now since they're tapped out. Courting in the opponent's turn would trigger our uh, Warmaster a second time. So it would generate two more tokens and we can have a look here how much damage we're working with. If we take a look at the board, I think we end up with 15 creatures total after getting Shaun of the Pack and triggering double Warmaster. So drain them for 15 here to just win the game. And that's before we take another attack into account, which could deal even more damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Sentinel into Warmaster plus Sentinel, make a token, would be the ideal start here. No removal. What's her opponent up to? Mono black. It's gonna be two mana removal perhaps. All right, we do get to untap, but it does seem like they have removal at the ready. So with that in mind, what's my play? Could just play a Leaf Crown Visionary as a distraction, or we could try to deploy another Sentinel, but there's no easy way to make that happen without them just killing something in response here and messing that up. So I think going for Visionary and then see if that resolves. They likely keep removal for Visionary instead of Sentinel. All right, they're going to Edict Sentinel response. Fair enough. Well, if Visionary survives, we get to start drawing. If not, we can go Warmaster into Sentinel next turn. And Liliana was to be expected. So you have some good removal from the opponent. They're on the play, so they were able to leverage the slightly more expensive removal spells. Now we get to play Warmaster plus Lanor Elves. And then if they make me discard, I can ditch Sentinel. Hope to keep Collected Company. Don't have much of a board here, so Shaman of the Pack's not looking all that great yet. Do I see Waste Knot, so opponent's a discard deck. So now if we discard Sentinel, or opponent gets to make a zombie, that's alright. Opponent ditched a Visitor, which they can Madness, so they're still getting value here, that's nice. Okay, so what's the plan here? Liliana can make me discard Courtyard, perhaps, and then we can still company in the opponent's turn, and then hope to untap and cast Shaman for a lot of damage. Could attempt to just take out Liliana. If we hit a good collected company with a few lords, we can amp up the pressure. Close call. I think we have to prepare for a discard spell either way. Question is, do I try and empty my hand as much as possible and just play the land? Get us closer to activating Warmaster, or do I hope they only have Liliana to make me discard? And then, yeah, it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to take out Liliana while preserving my key creatures. So I think I pass. They could now, of course, remove Warmaster in response to company to deny an extra token. But we'll see what the opponent's got going on. Shieldred, that's a good one. So that can gain them more life as well. And then I could just company right now before giving them extra mana by discarding Courtyard. I guess we discard land and then uh, take it from there. Opponent had another Waste Knot. Two mana left. And just a land. Okay. So we do get to cast company into Shaman of the Pack, which is more than I hoped for. And we hit Warmaster and another Shaman. Is that going to be enough for a win here? Get to make two tokens, Shaman. So we end up with four, five, six, seven creatures. Untap, play another Shaman, set up an attack. Yeah, if not lethal, it's very close to it, so I think we still go for it. Clan Caller is also an option, but we don't get to make as many tokens that way. 
and another Elvish Mystic we could also play. So we're empty handed. Play Shaman. Opponent is at two, and we should have at least two damage going through here. Awesome. Yeah, that's the power of Shaman of the Pack in this deck. Can win you games out of nowhere. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. The Lenor Elves can hopefully find another one drop here to play alongside Warmaster on turn two. Opponent also with green mana and Lenor Elves on one. Okay, so they could be on a green devotion strategy, which the Elf deck can potentially overpower if we can go wide enough and drain them to death with a Shaman of the Pack. And there's Kiora, so devotion confirmed. So our opponent's off to a good start. No other one mana elf for now. So yeah, don't have to fear removal in this matchup, so we could play Warmaster to start assembling an army of tokens. Don't think attacking Kiora's gonna matter since we're unlikely to take her out. So I'll save myself the two damage. Polucronos is a good one. Can turn into a huge life linker. Gonna make it harder to drain them with Shaman. But another Warmaster is nice. So I think instead of playing company right now, we want to make more tokens first. And then Elite vs Visionary is another interesting decision. I guess we'll play the Elite for now. And then next turn, likely go for company. Court of Calling would be great with double Warmaster. Is your opponent still missing Nykthos to really go off here? Another one mana elf. Yeah, I think we want to set up Collected Company. And then I might as well do it now. If we hit two lords pumping the team, then uh, can maybe set up some attacks. Okay, Elite and Clan Caller. So that makes a lot of tokens here. So, could set up some attacks on Kiora. Or we could go face. Then our opponent can take out double Warmaster. Take nine damage down to 11, and then next turn with Shaman of the Pack, we should have lethal. So an all-out attack is fine, or we can just pass and go for the next turn. There's also the option of taking out Kiora to deny one mana. And yeah, if they hit a Nykthos, that could certainly matter since their devotion is very high. I think we just hope they don't hit a Nykthos and then set up lethal next turn, keeping double Warmaster in play, which can also generate two more elves. Tribute's fine, so no Nykthos. And next turn we should be able to kill them. The ocean surges, life thrives. Another one man elf gets a few plus one counters, that's okay. So the Devotion deck had some nice three mana creatures, but they couldn't really fully go off here. And now Shaman of the Pack can take it home. Our opponent sets up their blocks, but uh, we've got a little bit more than lethal here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is definitely counting on a good collected company, but we'll give it a try. Still gonna play Mystic, I think, although actually, let's go with Sentinel on the off chance that our opponent's got some one damage removal spell. Since it's not like Mystic would be doing much more than Sentinel here, not interested in casting a three drop. So now we can play Mystic plus another Sentinel attack for one. And next turn set up Collected Company into maybe even a Court of Calling in the same turn cycle. Opponent a Black Devotion strategy. Elite is nice, although it does not let me Collected Company, it would let me set up a Court of Calling afterwards. Company still probably has the highest upside, so just gonna pass it back. Can Company end of turn. And 
and go for the throat on Mystic, so we have to respond. And just hit two one mana elves. Yeah, not the best company. So now what's our plan? Next turn, play Elite and maybe Court for Shaman. Untap, play another one. Trespasser can gain more life. Another cord. All right, now we're cooking. So play elite, and then yeah, I think we just pass. Plan to cast cord for three. Untap. Play shaman plus another cord for three. Opponent's looking at field of ruin, or I guess demolition field, the new iteration. Okay, well that's cord. Probably see your removal and response. Opponent's at 13, so they did not have removal for one of my elves. Now we play Shaman, and then I can still court for another one. Now go for the Throat Shaman. They could have actually uh, killed it in response to the trigger last turn to prevent one damage, but that's alright. And court for another shaman, anyways. And drain them to death here. Sweet, who needs to attack, anyways? On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a land. Otherwise, it's actually quite good. So, any untapped land here. To go Sentinel into Warmaster plus Sentinel would be appreciated. If not, we're off to a slightly clunkier start. Another Sentinel, alright. Get to double spell Sentinels now. So we're still developing our mana somewhat. Facing what could be Green Devotion. With their own Elves. And a Pack Leader, so maybe it's more of a Stompy deck after all. Overgrown Tomb's good. So now play Warmaster, play Visionary. Could also play Visionary and then play Warmaster. But yeah, that's not going to let me draw anyways. So I prefer making the token. Okay. And then now we're setting up for maybe Collected Company and then Court for Shaman of the Pack. Opponent could have some fight spells to kill Warmaster here, or Visionary. It's gonna be a Questing Beast, never a bad card. And Mystics, our opponent gets to draw with Pack Tactics. And no blocks. So we're at 11. But we do get to untap with a lot of great options. So I think we main phase collected company and then maybe cord in the opponent's turn to trigger Warmaster again. Question is whether I want to play Overgrown Tomb untapped. If I company, I have to tap double Sentinel, tap Visionary, tap Elf, so I still have Warmaster, Sentinel, and then a token for Warmaster untapped, plus two more creatures we get off collected company, presumably. So if we don't get another token maker, I may be short of casting court for three. So I think we need to shock ourselves, cast company, and see where we're at. Just a one mystic, ouch. That's not a, a very good collected company. So yeah, I can get a shaman of the pack, and that's probably the plan in the opponent's turn. It would be big enough to trade for questing beast, so we've got that going for us. And then next turn can hope to activate Warmaster, but a bit of a precarious situation. Could also get another Lord to pump the team. Shaman's probably still better, but it's a close call. Defiler Vigor can also go big here. Yeah, so we're not going to outsize the green Stompy deck, so we just need to try and go wide and get them with the Shaman of the pack, I think. We'll see if they attack. Maybe only with Questing Beast. Yep. So I'll take five. 
and then what's the plan next turn? So let's say I take five, court for Shaman, how much damage are we working with here? Four, eight, ten, points at eight, four blockers. I think we'll still have enough for lethal, but it's gonna be very close. Alright, another Shaman will certainly do it. Saves us the trouble. But we can do the math here to figure out if we had lethal without another Shaman top deck. Because we can just turn the team sideways, points at 8, 4 blockers. So they get to block our 4 largest attackers, which is Shaman. And then our uh, Warmaster, 2 of the Sentinels, so we still have Sentinel. Visionary, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, we should still have lethal even without another Shaman top deck, but I'll take it on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And despite being a one lander, this hand's actually close to being great. If we draw second lands, elves into Warmaster plus elves, and then we're off to the races. Yeah, I think it's worth a try. Could be vulnerable to removal on elves turn one. But against green-white, that's less likely to happen. Is there opponent likely an Angel Life gain deck? Portable hole, never mind. Could still be Angel Life gain, but with a pretty slow start. Yeah, I guess we'll still play Warmaster here. It's not like Land or Elves will speed things up unless we draw land next turn. Which was maybe still worth it if we get to double spell Warmaster and Elite. Wedding announcement, all right, so no life gain deck, but uh, now we get to double spell Elves and Visionary. Could also still play Elite first, since Warmaster has a good attack, and then Visionary will have a bigger impact next turn. With a land, I could play Visionary and then draw after playing Elite. Not sure what to expect from our opponent here. Spellbinder. Likely to exile Shaman of the pack. But we'll still be able to cast it eventually. So it could have been worse. Alright, Shaman exiled, cost 5 now. And drew another one anyways. So, stick to the plan, Visionary plus Elite. And then attack with everyone but Warmaster. Likely see trade for Spellbinder. And then Shaman into Shaman could seal the deal. It's gonna be Yasharn. It's your opponent, kind of a green white ETB, maybe Hate Bear style of deck. They might be playing Voice of Resurgence as well. Not sure about Thalia with Portable Hole and Wedding Announcement, but it's possible. But uh, yeah, just go for Shaman of the Pack. And then, do we have an all-out attack to win the game? I guess I'll draw here to try and hit my land drop. Opponent's at four, they've got four blockers. Block, 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 and yeah, that should still be just enough for lethal, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This is an easy mulligan, no accelerants, only one land. This is better. And then we probably ditch one land here. Even though I would love to cast my Collected Company on curve, we still have Sentinel, and between other mana elves and lands, we're pretty likely to get there. Turn one Lunark Veteran, put into life gain deck. And there's another company, so we better find our mana here to cast back to back company. Double Veteran. And we top decked Elvish Mystic, that's perfect. It gives us another mana source and will trigger Warmaster. So 
Your opponent likely playing Voice of the Blasts. Maybe a Moon Dancer as well. Jada is next, so I guess it is an Angel Life Gain deck after all. Okay, so I could collect a company now. And then if we make enough tokens, still Court of Calling in the opponent's turn. We hit Shaman of the Pack and Dwinnan's Elite. I think that beats Leaf Ground Visionary. So first want to make all the tokens and then drain them. So I wouldn't be able to court for three, but I can court for two in the opponent's turn, which may still be good enough. Because that would trigger War Master. I can get another War Master, so it kind of triggers itself. And then Company, if it hits another Shaman, is probably game over. But it can also just start attacking after playing a Visionary. And I just like the mana efficiency here of uh, getting to court end of turn. Untap, and there's another Shaman of the Pack. Okay, uh, let's see here. If we cast Shaman, what happens? Opponent takes a ton of damage. Yeah, that's good enough. Two more tokens, bones at two. And that should seal the deal. Awesome. Yeah, the green-white angel life gain deck can be somewhat scary for opponent has a good start with a Bishop of Wings into a Valkyrie to start gaining life and they can easily get out of range from Shaun of the Pack. But uh, typically I would favor the Elf deck just being able to get on the board a little bit faster thanks to that mana acceleration. And then once you get Warmaster going you can just go wide, pump the team and attack past a bunch of angels. Alright, so we get to see our Elf deck in action and I'm quite pleased with the result. It got us out of gold into platinum pretty quickly and most of the games seem to be quite one-sided if we got to do our thing. Now of course there are still bad matchups out there. Decks packing sweepers in the main deck can be very difficult for the Elf deck, so those are the matchups you'll want to avoid. But even there, if you're playing best of three, there are still tools available in the sideboard, like maybe a Thoughtseize that you can still cast with your black mana to try and take those away, so it's not a desperate matchup necessarily. So so yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.